Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. We're going to examine the involvement of Turkish Air Force in the Syrian Civil War. The title says Turkish Air to Air Kills, and that will be the main focus, but we are going to start with something else, which I believe is quite significant. On June 22, 2012, a Turkish RF-4E Phantom was flying a mission over the Mediterranean Sea. Let me say that I'm perfectly aware this is not an RF-4, but rather a standard F-4E. We don't have the recon variant in DCS, so please, there is no need to comment on this. As we wait for the high fidelity Phantom, it's worth mentioning that a mod has recently been released which improves the quality of textures for the AI model, and this is what's used here. When the war in Syria started, Turkey condemned the actions of Assad's government and started supporting insurgent groups. As the war escalated, Turkish involvement was getting more direct. But back to June 22nd, the Turkish Phantom was flown by Captain Gohan Ertan and Lieutenant Hassan Hussein Aksoy. Officially, the purpose of the flight was radar testing. Its flight path at one point brought it within Syrian airspace. That is one thing that Turkey admits. However, Turkey and Syria don't agree on the details of the flight path and how deep the Phantom was within the airspace of Syria. Both sides released radar snapshots, but let's first take a look at the path as claimed by Turkey. The airplane was flying north of Cyprus at 11.06 am on 21,400 feet. It continued on a northeast course towards Turkish territory. At 11.23, it was on 7,500 feet and it made a southwest turn. It then continued for 90 miles and dropped down to 2,000 feet. This light put it very near Syrian airspace, but it didn't violate it. The Turkish Phantom then turned northeast towards Turkey, but this time it did violate Syrian airspace, flying very low on 200 feet. It stayed in Syrian airspace for about 5 minutes and then continued on the same course climbing to 3000 feet. After that, the RF-4E again turned southwest, flying just outside Syrian airspace. But then, at 11.56, it turned southeast towards it. The airplane was hit by the Syrian anti-aircraft defense at 7,400 feet, and it crashed into the sea, still about one mile in international airspace. Both men were killed. One point of contest is what kind of weapon was used to shoot the Phantom down. While Turks don't specify it, if their version is correct, it couldn't have been an anti-aircraft gun, because no such weapon operated by the Syrians has that range. Some sources claim it was an SA-3 SAM system. This weapon, however, has a relatively short range and the Phantom would have been just outside of its reach. Testing in DCS confirms this, given the exact location specified by Turks. It must have been another system, probably an SA-2, which is older but has longer range. 
It could have also been SA-5, an extremely long-range system operated by Syria. Bodies of two aircrew were found after days of search, and debris of the down Phantom was recovered from the sea bottom. Syrian radar picture is similar for the most part, but according to them, the Phantom was about one kilometer from the Syrian coast when it was hit by AAA. It crashed into the sea about 10 kilometers from the coastline, which is well within the 12 nautical miles of territorial waters. This suggests that the Phantom was probably already in a turn and it continued to fly towards the sea after being hit. That was a bit hard to do in DCS, but you can get the general picture. There is a video which supposedly shows the moment of the shoe down from the beach, but nothing can really be seen on it. This is probably one of those things that will never be 100% confirmed. The plausibility of Turkish claims that the Phantom wasn't really spying on Assad's forces and that the airspace violation was a result of navigation error is something I'm going to leave you to judge. The date is now September 16, 2013. Turkey is still supporting Syrian insurgent groups, at the same time it's flying very intensive combat air patrols along its border with Syria. Two F-16s belonging to Squadron 182 were on station in early afternoon. According to Turkish sources, a Syrian Mi-17 helicopter was first tracked at 1.41 pm, at 26 nautical miles from the border. When the helicopter came within 5 miles of the border, a warning was issued. This is Turkish Air Force speaking on guard. You are approaching Turkish airspace. Change your heading south immediately. At 2.25 pm, the helicopter entered Turkish airspace near the town of Yayladak, flying on 14,000 feet. Total depth of airspace violation was about 2 kilometers. The two F-16s were vectored to intercept it. Sidewinder AIM-9X is a weapon believed to be used, while the name of the Turkish pilot is unknown. Video footage of the helicopter falling and subsequent wreckage is available on YouTube. Some sources report that two crew members managed to jump out of the burning helicopter and parachute safely to the ground. Unfortunately, they were captured by insurgent extremists and executed.
The next incident involving Turkish Air Force fighters took place on March 23, 2014. Two Syrian MiG-23s were involved in the fight between pro-government forces and insurgents for Kassab border crossing. Some sources describe the MiG as BN versions, others as MF. According to the Turkish official statement, MiGs were first tracked at 80 miles from the border. Warnings were given, but they continued nevertheless. The final warning was issued at 10 nautical miles from the border. One of the MiGs then turned away, but the other continued and crossed into Turkish airspace at 1.13 p.m. It was then intercepted by an F-16 belonging to squadron number 182. Some sources list squadron 181. The weapon used by the Turkish F-16 is believed to be Amram. The MiG reportedly entered Turkish airspace for about one mile and the wreckage crashed just into Syrian territory. The pilot successfully ejected and was rescued by friendly forces. Syrian official attitude is that no airspace violation ever occurred. The name of the Turkish pilot who scored a kill was not published. The next kill for the Turkish Air Force was a drone. The incident took place on 16 May 2015. Two F-16s were involved in the intercept and the target was an Iranian-built Mohajer 4. Mohajer is a family of unarmed surveillance drones developed since the 80s. Not many details are available about this incident. Turkey initially claimed that they had shut down a helicopter. 
an unknown aircraft entered Turkish airspace and stayed in it for at least five minutes. He was then intercepted by two F-16s from an unknown squadron and two Sidewinder missiles were launched at it. drone crashed into Syrian territory. I need to point out that selection of drones in DCS world is very limited, so we are using the only available ones, and they are not necessarily similar to the ones used historically. There was one more drone shootdown incident which supposedly took place on 16th October 2015. A Russian Orlan 10 drone is believed to have been shut down by Turkish F 16s after crossing the border 3 kilometers into Hatay province. This was not confirmed by Russia, but if it indeed happened, it was an announcement of the most famous air to air kill in the Syrian civil war. But more on that in part 2 of the video. If you like this one, be sure to press the like button, support the channel on Patreon to ensure future content, and keep watching Showtime 112.